Hey guys, it's Mike and you're watching That's Cool Vintage Collectibles. And before we do today's video, I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you to everybody who has liked and subscribed and checked out the page. I started this page uh, about the weekend before Christmas and we're now early February and I'm starting to see some real growth in the channel. We're over 160 subscriptions and over 30,000 views. So really appreciate all of the support and um, I, I, it's just been great. So today's video, we're going to talk about the Harlem Globetrotters, one of the greatest live entertainment things you can go and see um, that sort of has never really changed over the years. It's just the same as it always has been and it's a good time and it's very uh, family friendly. Great entertainment value and uh, usually pretty affordable to go check out. So I'm going to show you some of my uh, Harlem Globetrotter items today that are in my collection. Stay tuned. <music> became aware of the Harlem Globetrotters through old cartoon reruns in the 1980s from the 1960s and in the 60s they were on shows uh, such as Scooby-Doo and uh, Hanna-Barbera had a, a contract with the Globetrotters to put them in cartoons. They also did comic books and this is an original Globetrotter comic book which is kind of cool. Um, just to see the, the, the cartoon first I think really did uh, set a tone for me as a kid. I, I instantly kind of became interested in what this was. Just seeing the cartoon characters interact on the show, you know, when they'd enter a scene, the, uh, the their theme song, Sweet George Brown, you know, the whistling song of the Globetrotters and spinning the ball on their finger and the, the red, white, and blue sweaters and everything. It was just, it was very um, interesting. And I, I kind of thought that was always pretty cool. And I didn't know anything about them. Uh, but that was actually quite a ways into their history. The Globetrotters started way back in the 1920s, and they were just called the Globetrotters, and they started on the south side of Chicago, actually. And there was a fellow by the name of Abe Saperstein that became kind of a manager of the team. And he felt the center of black America was actually Harlem, New York, and that the team should be renamed, although none of the players were from there. So they became the Harlem Globetrotters, but they were not the Harlem Globetrotters and that's that's how the team started since then though they've played over 26,000 games in over 124 countries and have become somewhat of an institution for basketball well, when the Globetrotters started they were pretty well a basketball team that traveled around the country playing exhibition games against various small town clubs and by the 1950s it was pretty obvious that the team needed a larger greater opponent than just some of these local teams and uh, cue in the Washington Generals and the Generals became the opponent from 1953 to 1995 and uh, were, were instructed to basically play against the squad to keep the score close um, they were they were told to let the Globetrotters do their tricks and, and score, but when they had the ball, they were instructed to try to score as often as they could on the Globetrotters. So this worked pretty well. There was a game in 1971 where the Generals actually mustered up a win in the only loss in franchise history for the Globetrotters. And uh, between 1995 and 2015, they were replaced by the New York Nationals. And uh, I saw the Nationals twice during this period um, in the early 2000s. And the first one I saw in Peterborough, Ontario. And it was fun. They were, they were pretty good, you know, to see the Globetrotters in person. But to me, I, I felt like they didn't quite live up to expectations that day. They were okay. We had good seats. Um, but they missed a lot of shots and, and kind of weren't maybe on their game as well as I thought they might have been. Uh, the second time I saw them was in Montreal in 2008 and uh, I was on a boys weekend with my dad and my brother in Montreal and um, typical Montreal weather in April it was uh, you know started the day cold and then it started to rain and then it was ice and then it snowed and then it rained again and by the time we'd walked around in that for a while we were pretty tired of being outside so we decided to get a ticket and uh, go see the Globetrotters that night in the Bell Center and this is my ticket to that uh, show cost all of $24.50 to see the Globetrotters in 2008 in Montreal and we had a great time. It was just a, um, they were way better than the first time I'd seen them and they were on their game and, and hitting shots and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a good time and um, uh, the New York Nationals being their opponent at that event. So uh, it was kind of cool to see them in person a couple of times. I felt like at that one, I, I'd seen what the team was really capable of doing. It was pretty wild to see them that way. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know a lot of the player history of the Globetrotters, but I do know uh, Wilt Chamberlain was a Globetrotter in 1958 and 59. And sort of the face of the franchise for a long time was a player named Meadowlark Lemon. 
And if we uh, kind of see this piece in my collection, this is a 1971 Fleer Harlem Globetrotter basketball card. They did a set of cards on the Globetrotters in the early 70s, and this is Meadowlark Lemon's card. And uh, he became sort of the spokesperson and face of the franchise at that point. So somebody that um, is pretty recognizable for longtime Globetrotter fans. So that's his card from the, I think it's 1971 Fleer Globetrotter set. So the last piece I'm going to show you in my collection today is a piece I picked up a couple of years ago. And during the pandemic, I sort of rediscovered my love of collecting uh, sports memorabilia and just something else to get into besides music and other things. So I kind of got back into pop culture and sports and other collectibles, antiques and things like that, that I, I collected a long time ago, but I've rediscovered a passion for and enjoyment of. So I've gotten back into that. And one of the things I saw early on was a, a buddy of mine has a, um, a booth in an antique market and he got in this signed Globetrotter basketball. And, um, I just thought that was very cool and really, you know, bonded with it right away. I thought I got to have that thing for my collection. So uh, I made a deal with him and took this home. And it's uh, it's probably signed around the time I saw the team, actually. Uh, and it, it's just kind of got the history, you know, on there. So pretty cool. He's a very reputable dealer. Um, I'm not concerned at all about the, the validity of the, the items. But um, I was very happy to get that for my collection and to continue uh, being a fan of the Harlem Globetrotters. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief look at the Harlem Globetrotters and a few pieces from my humble Globetrotter collection. Nothing major, but kind of cool uh, items nonetheless. And I like to collect things that are related to experiences that I've had or places I've traveled to and things like that. So that ticks a couple of boxes for me with that stuff. And uh, I like to see it here in my collection as it's uh, displayed. So that's kind of fun. Uh, as always, uh, really appreciate everybody checking out the channel and watching these episodes. And uh, give us a like and subscribe and we'll keep it coming and keep on collecting.